Now, have you ever thought when you consume anything from the media, be it news or, you know, something you've read in any newspaper, have you ever thought where it's coming from and why it is there? Um, today, we look into some of the narratives that are portrayed by the media on migrants. It's very, very important that we understand these narratives and some of the impacts that they can have in society. You know, some of the biggest xenophobic attacks have actually come from some of you know, the, the narratives that come from the media. Now, to help us unpack all of this, we have a journalist who's also a researcher and he's also an award-winning human rights defender. Um, we will be talking about some of those narratives today. But before we go there, please make sure to join in on all our social media conversations. Let us know what you think about today's topic. Let us know what you think. Some of the narratives that go out in the media that cause xenophobia or maybe they just, you know, show a different perspective of what you know and what you've seen about migrants. I'm your host, Leletu, and let us talk. Today we have Mr. Den Mochuma. He is, as I've said, a journalist. He's also a researcher. He's currently doing his master's, and he will be helping us unpack all of those narratives today. He will be giving us some of his perspectives as a journalist and also as an experienced migrant. He will also be sharing his story and how he got to South Africa. Mr. Denmo, welcome to the show and thank you for coming through. Thank you, Lele, too. Thank you also to your, to your viewers and listeners. Great. So please tell me, what are some of, of, of the narratives that you've seen, um, not just in your capacity as a journalist, but also as a migrant? What are some of the narratives about migrants you have seen, you know, being portrayed on media and specifically negative mar narratives, because that's what we're focusing on today. Um, what are some of those narratives you've seen and how do you think they actually come about? Thank you, Lele, too, for asking that very important question. Um, as you know, Lele, too, if we analyze uh, most of the articles in most mainline media platforms, mm -hmm. We, we realize that uh, if, if we analyze, uh, let's say, the headlines, the, the captions, uh, the text itself, and even the images, mm. we actually come to the realization that uh, most of that is actually mischaracterizing and misrepresenting international immigration. Mm. Uh, in most cases, we realize that uh, they are actually negative. Mm. on international immigration, they are incomplete mm -hmm. narratives. They are actually misleading, deliberately misleading, and uh, distorted. Yeah. Uh, the coverage is also not complete. It's not objective. It's actually stereotyping international immigration, and it's also biased. Mm -hmm. uh, even though we have some cases where some media platforms try to report positively, yeah. Uh, but that positivity is actually shrouded in negativity yes. that we can't see that really there is any progress towards reporting international immigration in a positive note. Now, so what would you say, sorry for cutting you there, because okay. you just touched on a very important point that, mm. you know, obviously there's positive um, uh, narratives out there. Mm. But what would you say or why is it that, you know, the negative narratives re receive more attention? And what would you say the cause for those narratives is and the stereotypes? Yeah, yeah we, we came to realize that uh, negative narratives mostly, they are used by media platforms that sell fake news and propaganda. Mm. And if fake news and propaganda are shared with the public, yeah. uh, there will be more likes. And if there are more likes, what it means to the media uh, platform or media house is that uh, it gets more bias. Mm. And it's about money, it's about profit making, mm. and uh, it's no longer about humanity. Mm. Uh, the, the purpose really is just to, to get more likes, more views. more views, and if they get more views, it means there is more uh, a profit coming to the organization. Mm. Uh, that that is what That's we actually cause. actually so realize. it's just yeah. a, a money making it's sort of a money making uh, platform. So most media houses, if I go deeper, will realize that they are actually neoliberal platforms. Mm. They are like yes. corporates. Yes, if you look at the board of directors of those uh, uh, media houses, you realize that they are actually uh, lawyers mm. specialize in business and corporate law. Mm. We also have people who are experienced in finance, yeah. people who are experienced in economics, people with no background even of human rights. Yeah. So the pep and most of those media platforms, they are actually uh, 
a listed in the stock exchange. Mm. Like there was the stock exchange, yeah. if you trace it, in the even international stock exchange platforms. Mm. So you, you, we, have, we have no doubt that it's about making money. Mm. And the, if it's about making money, therefore, the cause of a human being does not matter. We can walk on dead bodies as long as we make We're money. money. So it is fine. Yeah. It's the current world order. Yeah. So that's how it has actually relegated mm. and uh, discriminated actually a very vulnerable and critical group of people, yeah. such as international immigrants. Yeah. yeah. So it's about what sells. What sells. Even media, even journalists themselves, mm. they want money. Mm. You get that? If we go down there, uh, they want money. How much do they contribute to the media? platform. Mm. Uh, most of these reporters on international immigration, they're actually freelance journalists. Mm. And uh, you know, the level of exploitation of these uh, freelance journalists is actually alarming mm. because they have to contribute some articles, mm. perhaps uh, five, six per month in mm. order to be paid perhaps a reasonable salary. So yeah. they will be rushing towards meeting deadlines mm. and uh, uh, covering quite a lot of stories. And as a result, they come up with the stories that are not complete, uh, stories that are distorted, stories that if you analyze them very well, you realize that this is purely propaganda, it's purely fake news. Yeah. yeah. So they don't really care about the effect of, of whatever it is they put out. They, they don't care as long as it raises a public uh, outcry. Wow. And when there is a public outcry... And public attention. Public attention, mm. that's the correct word, actually. Like, there's a crisis. Mm. And if there's a crisis, it means xenophobic groups then, because uh, uh, international immigration is actually viewed as a crisis area, yeah. you know? Mm. So it's, it's a disaster. They are coming from Lesotho, they are coming from Zimbabwe, many mm. influx of them that are coming to South Africa. Wow. You see, and they are wow. criminals, you know? It's actually like stereotyping them, you know? Portrayed yeah. as criminals, portrayed as predators of diseases, portrayed as uh, uh, murderers and rapists, mm. you mm. see? Can and, you, can we mm. hold that thought, thought okay. for a bit? We just have to quickly take a short break. Okay. We'll Thank be you. back. Um, Denmo is not going anywhere. We continue talking about some of the negative narratives on migrants and on migration in general. Now, please do join in on the social media conversations. Don't forget, on Instagram, we are at official Africa underscore Africa Unite. On Twitter, we are Africa underscore Unite underscore ZA. And on Facebook, we are Africa Unite. Please let us know what you think are some of the most negative narratives that you've seen being portrayed about migrants. We'll take a short break. Please stay tuned. We'll be talking to Denmo once more. See you after the break. And welcome back. You are still watching Conversations with Africa Unite. And we're still talking about some of the narratives that are portrayed on the media about migrants. Now, in studio, you will remember, we have Mr. Denmo Chuma, who is a journalist as well as a researcher. He's also an award-winning human rights defender. Now, um, please don't forget, before, before anything, don't forget to join in on the social media conversations on our Instagram Twitter as well as our Facebook pages. Let us know what you think are some of the most negative narratives that are put out there about migrants in the media. Um, now, Denmo, you were just telling us now about, you know, some of the effects of, of these narratives that are put out there about migrants, right? So we've mentioned that obviously, you know, the mis media houses don't really care much about, you know, human rights and how these narratives affect people. But what do you think are the actual effects? And obviously, you being a migrant as well, what do you think you know, the, the effects of, of those narratives are? And do you think that um, you know, it, it's usually about African migration, or is it migration in general? Because I think there's this, there's this tendency to, you know, to give these negative narratives only on African migrants. Because mm. if you read, for instance, in Europe, it's, it's literally not the same thing. It's usually just, you know, towards African migrants. Now, please tell us, what do you think are some of the effects or how does this impact migrants or the lives of migrants, all these narratives? Actually, the narratives have a very negative effect on the life of uh, immigrants mm. because we have to understand that uh, the media plays a very critical role in terms of uh, agenda setting mm. and uh, how people... V 
view each other or yes. people behave or react towards each other. Yes. So the media can build peace and at the same time can create war. Mm. So in this case, if we look at the negative uh, portrayal of international immigration mm. uh, by the mainland media, uh, as it is perceived by the locals, particularly the host community, yes. and they uh, given the picture of an immigrant who is a rapist, mm. uh, an immigrant who is a drug dealer, mm. with quite a number of uh, local brothers and sisters who are now addicted to a whoop and all those things, mm. you know, mm. family members, you know. Uh, a person will actually be outraged. And uh, the only solution to deal with this immigrant is death. And uh, this death has been uh, announced by the media. Mm. Uh, the, uh, what you call the verdict has been announced by the media because the media has really criminalized international immigration. Mm. And if we look at, uh, at the stereotypes now, we, we have been talking about that to say, uh, Zimbabwean uh, immigrant uh, was caught, he killed about two yes. people, five yes. women. Uh, and with his Nigerian counterpart. Yes. That would portray to the uh, ordinary South African uh, brother or sister that all immigrants, they will not differentiate. It will be yeah, it will be blanketing all. All Zimbabweans will be blanketed as actually rapists and they have to be dealt with and if they are actually uh, called illegal immigrants then it means they don't have any reason to exist mm -hmm. their existence has been actually shattered they yeah. don't have any right to live mm -hmm. and uh, if we look at the high cases of mobile justice in, in the South African community, uh, we have no doubt that an immigrant who is labeled an illegal immigrant, a criminal, a drug dealer, you know, a car hijacker, a rapist, a murderer, will be punished to death. Mm. We have the case of uh, uh, Elvis Nyati was killed uh, in 2022, uh, actually in April, mm. for allegedly for not having documents in that way was bent and uh, was killed and bent to ashes mm. uh, mainly because he did not have documents and he was actually is illegal you know the term that is used is yes. illegal so if you are illegal then the solution is to kill you and to burn you to ashes so the society is actually justified by the media mm. to take any course of action against those who are considered to be undesirable and those who are considered to be not us who are othered like they mm. come from somewhere they're not part of us a colonial approach to everything to say uh, you know the Bantustan system of the colonial period of the apartheid era uh, that said we, you stay here you are Zulu you are Kosa uh -huh. you are mm. Pedi those are foreign nationals they are foreigners therefore they are not part of you so that Would same culture then, is still sorry, with sorry us sorry to mm. cut you no, off you say mm. then that that it also so perpetuate mm. xenophobia or it's a huge cause of xenophobia there's narratives would you say they've been used mm -hmm. you know sort of as a way to you know or one of the effects thereof is is the perpetuation of xenophobia yeah definitely they have perpetuated the xenophobia if we analyze articles for instance if we look at the high rate of xenophobia that took place from january 2022 starting at baratex rank in johannesburg Mm. Uh, where migrant vendors were actually attacked, their stores taken, uh, their properties and their livelihood shattered. Uh, we can realize that if we look at the preceding year, mm. there were, if we analyze quite a number of uh, even uh, media platforms, the mainland media platforms, we can tell that the portrayal of international immigration was highly negative, was mm. at its peak. Mm. Uh, there, there was justification of uh, any action against uh, uh, international immigrants of black, uh, perhaps African origin, who mm. are black, yeah. uh, uh, which we think perhaps is actually one of the effects of colonialism and apartheid. Yeah. So we cannot deny that actually the media is behind uh, the xenophobic attack that are actually with us today. Mm. And also if you look at uh, uh, terms such as colonial and very dehumanizing terms like uh, uh, an Im uh, like uh, a foreigner, you foreigner. know, uh, mm. terms like illegal mm. uh, immigrant. Mm. These are actually colonial terms. Wow. And uh, we cannot, if we go into our communities, you will realize that uh, everyone can talk of an illegal immigrant. They don't use our local languages mm. for that. Mm. 
They use English to mm. say properly it's illegal immigrant. This is undocumented, you see. Mm. They cannot say any other word in English, but that one they know. Mm. Uh, who actually influenced the people to say those terms? Is it that the people influence the media to say these terms? Mm. Or is the media who influence the people to say these terms? Wow. We are not undermining local knowledge production here. We know the locals, the indigenous people can come up with new ideas and new terms. But it is very high likely that it is the media which influenced the locals, the host community, especially those who are xenophobic. We, wow. we, uh, we, we have to be very clear here that yeah. not all local or the host community members are xenophobic. We yeah. have quite, we are here because of them. We have supported us in very difficult times. Mm. Uh, Can so we hold that we, thought again? Okay. Thank you so, so much, mm. Denmo. Mm. Very, very interesting discussion. But let's take a short break. We'll be back. We'll continue with this. Denmo is still not going anywhere. We're still mm. looking into some of the narratives that are portrayed about migrants in the media. Now, please let us know on our social media pages, let's continue the conversation. Do you think that the media is a huge cause of xenophobia? Or do you think that some of the negative narratives that are portrayed in media are a part of the cause of xenophobia? Let us know what you think on Instagram. We are official underscore Africa Unite on Twitter. We are Africa underscore Unite underscore ZA. And on Facebook, we are Africa Unite. Please let us know what you think. Don't go anywhere. We still have Denmo after the break. Please stay tuned. See you after the break. And welcome back to the show. We are still talking about some of the negative narratives that are portrayed in the media about migrants and, you know, how they affect migrant lives. Um, now, please don't forget, we are still on the conversations on the social media pages. We still have Denmo in studio with us, who's telling us some, you know, from a very expert perspective as a journalist and also as a migrant himself and a researcher, he's also a human rights defender, um, you know, what some of his experiences have been. Now, Denmo, we've been talking very much about these narratives and your perspectives as a journalist. Now, we want to hear your personal story. How did you get to South Africa? Um, where are you from in general? Okay. Mm. That's a good question. Thank you, mm. Meleki. Uh, actually, I left Zimbabwe in 2015, uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, following a director. Yeah, sorry. What happened? Yo, Funim. I will. Yo. Oh, okay. You heard that demo? Yes, yes, yes. Yes, you remember the question. Yes, yes, yes. Where he's from and mm -hmm. all that. So he's going to just start talking. Straight to starting. Actually, I left Zimbabwe in 2015. Mm -hmm. uh, by the end of 2015, after a direct attack uh, on my life uh, by the, the government of the then President Robert Gabriel Mugabe, uh, I was actually challenging his regime uh, for Mr. Ru and actually plunder mm -hmm. uh, that has left quite uh, millions of Zimbabweans impoverished. Uh, they was arrested uh, more than once, uh, tortured, imprisoned uh, for no case at all. I was never found guilt. I never stole even a chicken. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was actually persecuted, you know, by prosecution. That was the process. So I had to flee to Zimbabwe. Uh, colleagues of mine, like Itai Zamara, uh, were actually abducted and uh, they are nowhere to be seen. Uh, my journalism also, uh, I actually I exposed the regime for attacking and uh, also uh, suppressing press freedom, uh, writing uh, on a number of international platforms and even local platforms, uh, uh, writing on human rights, uh, justice, uh, democracy and uh, equality. 
Uh, so I had to leave Zimbabwe after that direct attack on my life. So then and, you came uh, to I came South to South Africa. Africa. Yes. So uh, I sought uh, asylum mm -hmm. and then uh, I was granted asylum uh, for about six or so years. Now I went to the refugee reception board for uh, determination on my refugee status. So mm -hmm. I'm still waiting for their decision. Uh, which they said uh, will come after three months, but now it's almost uh, uh, for five, six months uh, after oh. the hearing, you know. So, yeah, so it's, it's actually hectic, yeah. you know, it's, it's a really hectic, imagine. yeah, uh, in terms of the fact that uh, uh, you are given three months, con uh, three months extension, uh, you have to live, uh, you have to pay rent, you have to eat, mm. you see. Uh, who can give you a really a job, a serious employer? with a three months contract, you know, you yeah. can't get that, mm. you see. So it's, it's actually, we think it's not fair, it's just meant to kill an immigrant. And by the time that document comes, uh, that immigrant will be dead, mm. or uh, that immigrant will be sick from diseases like uh, high blood pressure, like uh, diabetes, uh, quite a lot of them mm. uh, that are associated with very harsh and difficult conditions. Uh, quite a number of our people, also colleagues, they actually having those problems, you yeah, know. Yeah, I can and imagine. They, I they can actually imagine. sick now, admitted, you know, chronic sicknesses and all those things, you see. Yeah. yeah because of very harsh living conditions that are actually uh, perpetuated by home affairs and other yeah. institutions. Yeah. Great. Um, at Denmo, I just want to check though. Um, mm. so having left Zimbabwe and come to South Africa, mm. have you heard any personal xenophobic attacks? that you think maybe could have come from these media narratives that are? Uh, the, the, the major xenophobic attacks that I faced were with institutions like mm. Warm Affairs yes, itself, like, like the police. Yes. So I think the police actually has been influenced by the media in yeah, terms so of their treatment of myself and others. Yeah. And also Warm Affairs itself has mm. been really influenced by the media. So yeah. the media has that power to also influence yes, institutions. Yes, it, it as well. yes, influence right. institutions because those uh, officials they actually rely they much rely. on mm. the media, especially the print media, even the radio and all that broadcasting yeah. media. Yeah. Uh, they actually the major consumers of that, yeah, and they are major consumers of that propaganda. And uh, some, of course, they have the political interests, mm. and uh, you know the, the politics in South Africa how it, it operates and how it's linked, related to international immigration. Yeah. Uh, of course, we have others who are positive but the majority actually negative on international immigration yes yeah. um we are out of time yes but just lastly before we close mm. what would you say are maybe the solutions to to this whole problem to these narratives like what can be done yes on the part of we journalists themselves i think they have to look and read uh, understand and realize that south africa is a signatory to the uh, international regional uh, protocols on uh, the uh, rise and the safety of immigrants mm. and also they have also to understand that uh, South Africa just recently passed the national action plan uh, to combat racism racial discrimination and xenophobia and other related intolerances mm. uh, they also have to read uh, the International Union of Journalists Code of, Co of Ethics and Conduct. They have to read also uh, the South African Union of Journalists Code of Ethics and the mm. South African Press Code. So journalists and, uh, must basically educate under themselves understand, and understand. The, mm. all those issues. Mm. And also they have to understand that as media professionals, they have a duty and a role either to promote peace or war. Okay. Like what happened in, in Rwanda, yeah. where media platforms actually are implicated in contributing to bloodshed in that country or genocide. Right. So the, we must move towards decolonizing the curriculum uh, for media platforms, and we must not consume uh, uh, the curriculum that is meant to promote division Thank and uh, also so otherness in our society. Mm. We must move towards solutions journalism where we appreciate the role of immigrants. Quite a number of immigrants are contributing positively to the South African economy, social life, and so on and so on. Why can't we highlight those stories instead of only talking about crisis, crisis, yeah. crisis, yeah. and let us build the society? That is my advice to uh, international, uh, I mean, to those who report on, on international immigration. Great. Thank you so, so much, Denmo. Unfortunately, we are out of time. Um, very interesting discussion today, but let's um, meet again next week and have a chat and speak more about some of these issues that are affecting migrants. Please don't forget to join in on the social media conversations. Remember, 
on Instagram. We are official underscore Africa Unite on Twitter. We are Africa underscore Unite underscore ZA. And on Facebook, we are Africa Unite. Please let us know what you think back at home. What do you think are some of the solutions to some of the negative narratives that are portrayed about migrants in the media? Um, we will see you next week. And please do not forget to tune in on the socials. See you next week. Goodbye.